Hi, it's Kent from Man About Tools, and this is another follow-up video to part three of my series on making garden box panels from lightweight concrete. And in this episode, I'll be pouring more aircrete. <laughs> I've been making these linked together concrete panels for rot proof garden boxes for a few years now. In part 3 I worked on concrete blends to find a mix that was light, strong and durable. And the aircrete that I made in that episode had some issues and it failed the durability test. And it also cracked and distorted as it cured and dried. So in this video I'll make another attempt at casting a strong and durable garden panel from aircrete. And also try some color additives to see how that looks. I'll show the foaming agent, mixing the cement, pouring, and finally unmolding. Then look at the weight and durability results as compared to regular gravel-based concrete. If you haven't seen part 1 and 2 of this series, then you might get more from this video if you watch them first, as I won't be covering all the steps needed to make the forms and prep them for casting. See the link in the upper right or in the description below. I'll be using the plywood forms I built in part 1 of the series. I have plans available on my website, manabouttools.com. I also have a full blog post for this video with the ingredients and ratios for the aircrete mixes. Okay, let's get started. The aircrete is made from only a few ingredients. Portland cement, shampoo to create a foam, and some glass fiber for extra strength. So I begin by diluting the shampoo in water. 15 fluid ounces of shampoo to 2.5 gallons of water. This will be the dilution that I'll use to create the foam. I use Suave Daily Clarifying Shampoo as my foaming agent. I like it as it makes a very good dense foam, it's cheap and it's widely available. I stir this with a paint mixer attached to my drill, on a low setting just to dissolve the shampoo in the water. In part 3 of this series, I was able to make foam with window screen attached to an egg beater style mixing attachment on my drill. I simply poured some of the shampoo dilution in a pail and whipped it up into a foam with the mixer. This works if you don't have an air compressor and foam making system. I was fortunate that Darwin from the Honeydew Carpenters sent me this large foam mate to try. Thank you my friend. It worked so well right out of the box that I'd recommend it to anyone who wants to get into making aircrete. I simply poured the shampoo dilution into the tank, connected my air compressor hose, and started making a dense shaving cream like foam instantly. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below. I use a digital scale to weigh my ingredients. This time around, I use 15 pounds of Portland cement, about 8.5 pounds of water, 3 quarters of a pound of foam, and a pinch of fiber. I slowly add the Portland cement to the water while spinning the slurry with a paint mixing attachment on a drill. I want a smooth, well-blended slurry here with no clumps or dry cement on the bottom or sides of the pail. I'll add the glass fiber and mix that in. Then I stop and use an improvised stir stick from a wooden dowel to hand stir the cement mix. This helps free up any clumps. With the slurry now ready, I connect the air hose to the foam mate and start making foam.
Once it's flowing thickly, I add some to the slurry pail. I have a mark on my stir stick that approximates the amount of aircrete I need to fill one 36 inch form. In this case, using a 5 gallon pail, I need the pail filled to the 8 inch mark as a minimum. I'll use my mixer to blend it all evenly and hand stir to make sure that everything was blended right to the bottom of the pail. Then I poured the aircrete into the form, giving it a bit of a jiggle to help settle it into the corners. Once the aircrete begins to thicken, I gently lay in a galvanized wire reinforcing grid, pressing it down so it settles right in the center and smooth the surface with a trowel. In the second blend, I'll use the same amount of cement and water, a bit less foam, and almost a pound of perlite. I want to see how this light volcanic sourced rock blends with aircrete and if it adds any strength or durability. Perlite is a hard, highly porous material made by superheating volcanic glass. As before, I slowly add the cement to the water, then add the glass fiber, hand stirring to free up any clumps from the sides or bottom of the pail, Then add the foam and blend it again with the drill. This worked very well. The aircrete had a lumpy consistency but poured well into the forms. I jiggled the form to settle it, then added a bit more to top it up. I smoothed it with a trowel and left to thicken. After a few minutes, I laid in a double wire grid. I wanted to see if adding two layers of wire grid worked better than just one. To make this grid, I simply folded a section of the galvanized fence in half and wrapped the ends into a flattened tube. I pressed this in and smoothed with a trowel. For the next test, I'll add about one fluid ounce of red liquid cement color to the water. I'll leave out the fiber on this one. I make a smooth cement slurry and add the foam. This aircrete came out a light chocolate brown color. I blend it well and pour it into a form. And I'll lay in a double wire mesh and smooth with a trowel. The final test, I'll add black cement color to the water. Leave out the fiber, but add perlite.
I kept the density of the aircrete fairly consistent through these tests, varying the fiber, perlite, and grid, and a bit of color additives for fun. I blend as before and pour into the form. When it starts to solidify, I'll add a single wire grid for reinforcement. When the aircrete solidified that afternoon, I covered the forms with plastic and left them for a couple of days. I remove all the screws from the form, gently wiggle the sides to free them, then remove the panel from the base and stand it on one side and then remove the ends. Aircrete is fun to make. It's involved for sure, but not very labor intensive. Everything is blended in a pail with a drill. It's light by default and has many uses. All the panels came out of the forms without issue. They all felt sound and solid. There were no cracks or any signs of warpage. I lined them up on sawhorses to get a shot of them before curing. These panels were submerged in water in an improvised tank that was a recycled bathtub. They soaked for two weeks, then pulled out and allowed to slowly dry in my shop for another two weeks. Then I weighed the panels and lined the first two I cast on the lawn and ran a line trimmer against them as a test of durability. I wanted to see how this denser aircrete held up to the impact of the spinning line and I wanted to see if the perlite helped. These new panels did very well in the durability test. There was little damage to the surface. The perlite didn't make much difference in this case and didn't increase the durability. Without a hard aggregate in the mix, this form of concrete is always going to be weaker. The trick is to find the right weight to strength balance for your application. The panels were very close in weight and average 56% lighter than regular concrete. This denser aircrete has a very good finish and it fared much better than the previous ones in the durability line trimmer test. There's some damage but it looks minimal and it looks to be the same in the panel with the perlite added. I don't see any cracks or warping of these panels so I think the bigger ratio of Portland to foam was the answer. It appears if you want strength and durability improvements you really need more cement. If that changes over time, I'll update my blog post. At this point, I don't see a huge advantage to adding perlite to aircrete or to doubling up the wire grid, but it doesn't seem to hurt either, so maybe the takeaway here is that it's easy to add both if wanted. The liquid cement dyes worked well and it was easy to add. The next time I'll even add more to get deeper colors. Darwin's Foam Mate worked very well. It allowed me to quickly make foam just when I needed it and just as much as I needed. So I can certainly recommend that. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, then please add them to the comments below. I try to get to as many as I can, especially in the first week or so of posting a new video. In the next episode, I'm going to make aircrete with CSA cement instead of Portland, and that will be up in about a week or so. 
If you like what you see here, then please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. This is Kent from Man About Tools. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.